While waiting for her mom to pick her up from summer camp, Libby steals some glances at a boy she has a crush on. In the car, Libby's mom Michelle teases Libby on her crush. Michelle acts like one of those old moms pretending to be a cool mom. She even allows her daughter to drive without a permit. Michelle has sold one of the lots on her land. Her romance novels haven't been selling too well, so she needs the cash. When they get home, Libby meets her mom's new boyfriend. She's in awe as he does a slow Baywatch walk back to shore. Michelle comments how she's been writing him constantly. A cheeky innuendo to tell your daughter. Libby hesitantly meets this new lover boy John. John gives Libby a bracelet called, the Navajo Stone of Life. It apparently represents the Phoenician goddess of fertility. Then, Libby gets dressed and tries to perk up her chest. She tries to act out how she's going to act around the handsome John. Once she's downstairs, she says hello to John, then stares at his happy trail when his shirt lifts up. During their early dinner together, Libby explains how John just magically appeared one day while she was riding out on the porch. John says he's an aquatic geneticist researching freshwater animals. When John explains in great lengths how he's trying to find a way for living things to survive in a saltwater world, Libby finds herself getting really hot and bothered by how hot and smart John is. Then, John tries to eat some greens and almost chokes. Michelle hugs to comfort the coughing mess, and John goes in to touch Libby on the shoulder. At night, that touch still lingers on Libby's shoulders. She imagines it again while she touches herself. However, she stops herself from going overboard. Then, she overhears her mother moaning in the bedroom. Libby creepily goes to check under the door crack. However, John gets up, so she runs away. Libby pretends to sleep while John stares at her from the hallway. The next morning, Libby catches her mom asking for some scratches on her arms. It's a weird tick that Michelle likes lately. During their alone time, Libby digs up a few canisters that have her mom and grandpa's name on tins. Every day on August 28, they gift something to their grandpa. However, Michelle doesn't want to partake in this tradition this year. Libby criticizes Michelle's attitude towards their grandpa, and says no wonder grandpa left the house to her instead of Michelle. Michelle finally says it's because her grandpa never loved her, then walks away. While alone by the water, Libby gets bit by a fat centipede. John says it's because the centipede is protecting its offspring. He begins to blow on Libby's bite mark and this makes chills run down Libby. John looks at her with deep ocean blue eyes. John wonders if he should take off because he doesn't want to cause a rift between Michelle and Libby. Libby says he should stay, especially since John loves Michelle. When Libby goes to apologize to her mom, Michelle is a bit tired and groggy. Michelle says her stomach hurts a little. Michelle tells her daughter that her and John are engaged. Libby admits that she's happy as long as Michelle is happy. Sometime later, Libby stares at John from her window. He removes his clothes, then catches Libby staring. Then, Libby decides to go to the basement to give John a drink. Unfortunately, John doesn't drink anything with sodium. Health freak. John shows her the cool setup he has in the basement. It's a bunch of lampreys in water tanks. Lampreys are a 360 million year old species that can survive in both freshwater and saltwater. Lampreys are parasitic creatures that can adapt to their environment easily by attaching themselves to other creatures. John invites Libby on a boat ride to collect some samples. During this, John asks Libby to hold his legs while he grabs some eels. She starts to talk about how she's applied to colleges far from home. Then, a pool of blood leaks between her legs. John reacts quickly by putting his shirt under her, so that her period blood doesn't get everywhere. John tries to reassure her to not be embarrassed. Then he makes it even more awkward by licking her blood to prove it's not a big deal. Once they reach the shore, Libby embarrassingly holds onto John's shirt while she walks away. She takes a shower to clean herself up and removes the bracelet that John gave her. John knocks on the door to see if Libby is okay. 
She doesn't respond, so he decides to quietly enter. Libby tells him she's in the shower. John pretends to leave the room, but he stands just outside the shower curtain and smells Libby's scent. Libby feels like something is off. Then, John goes to smell his shirt that was used to soak up Libby's period blood. He eventually leaves without getting caught. After the shower, Libby checks on her mom and finds John there about to mount Michelle. The two even make eye contact. Libby tries calling her friend Marley to tell her what's going on. But it doesn't connect. She sends her friend a bunch of messages though, telling her John is a freak. Afterwards, she finds that John has placed a sandwich at her door to apologize for his awkward behavior. Late at night, Libby is woken up by eerie red light coming from the lake. John walks toward this beam of light, disappearing into the water. Libby tries to fetch her mom, but she doesn't answer her locked door. So, Libby goes to the lake herself. Meanwhile, a figure behind her twitches weirdly. It's a very confused John. He claims he wasn't in the lake and is very dry. But then, contradicts this by saying he sleepwalks. Libby doesn't believe any of this and goes back inside. In the morning, Michelle is throwing up constantly and asks Libby to drive into town to get a pregnancy test and a bunch of medicine. While in town, she notices John walking and holding another woman. John notices Libby following them. Unfortunately, Libby is interrupted by the store clerk because she forgot to pay. When Libby arrives home, her friend Marley is there commenting on how hot John is. Libby gives her mom all the things she got at the store. Then, John insists Libby to tend to her friend. He comments that she looks fun. Libby is weirded out by another one of his comments. Libby wishes she could stay to let her mom know of all her recent discoveries about John. He winks her goodbye. Libby goes to Marley to explain everything freaky about John. Marley says Libby needs to get out of this house and tell her mom. Libby is too scared to though. So, Marley takes it upon herself to tell Michelle everything. While waiting, Libby decides to eat some macaroni in the fridge. Suddenly, she finds herself waking up on her bed. Apparently Marley left the house a while ago. Michelle breaks the news to Libby that she's pregnant. Libby doesn't look happy though, and she wonders if Marley told Michelle everything. Michelle doesn't seem too bothered by what Marley said. So, Libby reminds her that John licked her period blood. Michelle doesn't believe it and thinks Libby is just making up lies again. John winks at her, but it looks off. Libby calls him a freak and grabs her mom. However, Michelle slaps her daughter to the moon. In retaliation, Libby tells John that Michelle isn't actually 35 years old. She's 42 years old. John is upset with this lie. When he tries to leave, Michelle stops him. But his eyes go crazy on her. Libby tries to explain again how John is weird. However, Michelle is just straight upset with her. After things have calmed down, Libby hears something climbing up the house. Then, she hears her mom struggling. She finds John mounting her mother, while his skin changes with bumps on his back. When he climaxes, it's a weird deep throttling sound. Afterwards, Michelle is missing, so Libby stupidly looks for her in the lake. Realizing that there's no hope for her mother, Libby tries to drive away. However, she stupidly gets the car stuck by the lake. When Libby turns on her headlights, she sees something in the lake that viewers don't get to see. This prompts Libby to call 911, but she can't reach them. Instead, she calls her mom's phone and follows the ringtone into the basement. As she walks down the basement, the blue light reveals a bunch of hieroglyphs on her wrist where she had worn the bracelet. She discovers her mother tied and sitting in a large tank. She too has the same markings on her wrists. Libby grabs a bucket to reach her mom. Once Michelle finally becomes conscious, she starts screaming. This alerts John to come downstairs, so Libby rushes to hide, dropping the bucket and its contents onto the floor. When she hides in a corner, she notices weird fish-like feet being affected by the water. 
John decides to wear boots to avoid this. Michelle starts screaming as she gives birth to an inhuman creature. John is upset because the inhuman baby was born dead. He leaves with the baby. Libby finds John spitting some glowing ball into the creature's mouth. Then, she locks the basement door so that John can't come back inside. She tries calling 911, but it turns out John has a device that blocks all calls. John speaks to her through a small window and demands to be let inside. He snarls and growls like an alien creature. Then, Libby breaks the device so she can call the cops. While on the phone, the dispatcher tries to tell her to stay calm. Then, she discovers her dead friend Marley in a tank. John surprises Libby from behind. He chokes her while lifting her up. Luckily, there's a bucket with the same salt contents nearby. She uses it on John and it's super effective. She uses it some more to buy time to grab her mom. She doesn't wake up until Libby scratches her arm. Michelle apologizes for being a stupid hoe. After this, they run outside the house, only to be surrounded by other fish-like creatures. Her mom can't walk any longer as her face melts away like tuna melt. Then, Libby is attacked from behind. She wakes up tied to a chair in a basement. John comes down and punches a hole in the wall, revealing a dead woman in a tank. Another clone of John does the same exact thing. Libby screams for her life. John goes to her and says they don't have a long time. He growls and spits the blue ball into her mouth. He demands her to just swallow it. She eventually does. Then she wakes up inside a tank. She tries to struggle out of the tank, but her fate is the same as those around her. The movie ends. What did y'all think of this twisted crap? Definitely a weird movie. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.